We recently reviewed the Samyang 135mm f1.8 lens, and it kind of reminded me about how much I love using a 135mm lens. There's just a lot more that you can do with it than just portraits. Sometimes it gets kind of written off as a portrait lens, but there's loads you can do with it. So let's talk about this YouTube on Tuesday. <laughs> Welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday, where each and every, and every Tuesday we bring a brand new, fresh photography tutorial. This week I want to talk to you all about the many possibilities of a 135mm lens. Now, like I said in the intro, we recently used the Samyang 135 f1.8, lovely lens, but it got me thinking about 135mm lenses, and there's loads you can do with it. Sometimes a 135mm focal length is often thought of as a portrait lens. It's kind of a a tighter, an even tighter 85, right? It's even longer, so you get a lot of lens compression. You know, f1.8 is still nice and fast. Very easy to separate your subject and background, which can look fantastic. And it's kind of an even more exaggerated version of what we've talked about in the past, when we've talked about 85mm versus 35mm. 35mm being about where your subject is, 85mm being about who your subject is. A 135mm almost goes even further down that road of who your subject is. So there's absolutely no doubt it is absolutely fantastic for portraiture, you know, especially if you can get a little bit further away from your subject and get a little bit of the scene in there, a little bit like this photo of my dog, you can get some really beautiful portraits where it is all about the subject. And if you stop down a little bit like I have done here, you still get a little bit of that environment around your subject. Of course, you can do closer up photos as well to get some really close in portraiture and that can be fantastic, but it is so much more than just a portrait lens. So whether you're doing landscape, whether you're doing food photography, product photography, whatever it might be, this lens really helps you to identify and then focus on, no pun intended, your subject. So for example, in this photo, which is the landscape photo, the fact that it's a 135 millimeter lens forces me to pick a subject within the landscape. Now, this is a tip that we actually talked about last week when we were talking about summer photography, but also it's one of the best pieces of advice I was ever given about photography, which is to always identify a subject in the frame. It's gonna force you to do a better composition. It's gonna end up with a better photo. The mere act of thinking about the subject will create a better end result. And a 135 millimeter lens really forces you to think about the subject. Because it's giving you that lens compression, because the foreground's gonna be blurred, the background's gonna be blurred, you are gonna have to pick out a subject, a natural anchor point, a resting point for the viewer's eye within the photo. Now this is great for landscape, street photography, but also stuff like product and food photography where you can really focus in on that product. Take this photo, for example. I didn't really have to do that much to take a photo of these Sony headphones. I didn't have to do much to change the scene. I was able to set the headphones up where they normally sit anyway, make sure I've got a little bit of plant kind of in the background. I've got lighting just pointing a little bit towards the headphones so that they are nice and kind of lit and sharp. And then I can play around with the colors of the lights, but with the 135 millimeter lens, I am really focusing in on that Sony logo and on the headphones themselves, giving a kind of proper producty vibe. But you could pull further back and get a different kind of shot of the headphones like that. You could get a shot of the headphones surrounded by other things, but the focus is always gonna be on the subject which is the headphones. The same is true for street photography as well. When you're shooting at 135 millimeters, you're gonna have to have a subject within your street photos. Otherwise it's gonna look a little bit random and not very well thought through. You know, if you're using a much wider lens, you take a general street scene photo, but with a 135, you are gonna have to pick a subject. I think that's probably the main thing I like about 135 as a focal length is it forces you down that road to pick that subject, to identify what you're taking the photo of, what is the photo about, and then running with that. Whether it's portrait, landscape, and then the others we talked about, street, food, product photography, it really helps to force that composition to be the first thing you're thinking about while using this lens. Now let me know in the comments, do you like using a 135 millimeter lens? Is that something that you used before? Is it something that you're into? Or do you have a favorite focal length that you like to go to as your kind of general go-to lens? Let me know what it is down in the comments. Of course, there's links in the comments to all the things we use for this video and the photos, including that lovely Samyang 135 mm f1.8 lens. Ooh 
which is very nice indeed. Don't forget to like and subscribe as well because there's new content all the time. I'll be seeing you in the next video, but until then, as always, thanks for watching. Thank you.